Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video I'll be going over a little bit of a re review of the use of L's and C's at SS. So to define real quickly, so remember our L would indicate uh, any inductors that we're talking about. Uh, that's what we indicate by L's. Capa uh, C for capacitors. And then for steady state, I mean for SS would be in, tell us something about that the circuit is at steady state, steady state conditions, um, SS, okay? And then sort of further specifically talking about when we're talking about steady state in this, uh, well, what I'll be talking about right now is specifically under the condition of uh, the DC case, uh, so indicating direct current, um, again, as opposed to alternating current AC analysis, which um, is not what we're talking about right now. So under DC, so-called DC steady state conditions, sort of just recapping what's going on with inductors and capacitors in the circuit, all right? So for the inductor specifically, uh, here we indicate the schematic sim symbol that we have. Um, if we indicate some voltage plus to minus across here, it would indicate current flow in the same direction, current flow I in this case, and we have defined then how the voltage relates to the current through the expression V equals L times DI DT. So hereby meaning the change in current with respect to time is going to tell us something about how the voltage is going to change through this term L, where this L specifically is the so-called self-inductance term um, of the inductor, self-inductance. Okay, so then uh, aside from that, or basically if we were to rearrange, if we wanted to know what the current uh, through an inductor was as a function of the voltage, we could uh, swap this equation around, do a little bit of an integration factor, and come up with the expression that uh, I of T, let's say here specifically, equals 1 over L times the integral from over our time range, whatever that might be specified as, uh, times the voltage over some differentiation or integration term d tau plus whatever the initial current was i uh, at t naught here specifically. Okay, so again, this tells us that what the voltage would be, hap what would be doing in the inductor and what the current would be doing, again, with respect to each other. Now, when we talk about the DC steady state condition, the important thing to keep in mind is what does that mean exactly? Well, if, it means, if we're saying steady state, then that means there's no changes in our voltages or currents with respect to time. So if we look at this relationship here telling us what's going on with the uh, voltage with respect to the current, we see that it has to be, the current needs to be changing with respect to time in order to induce uh, some voltage, right? So therefore, if we're in the steady state condition, then this term goes to zero, okay? So we have no change with respect to time, so that derivative would have to be zero. And therefore, that tells us that our voltage also has to go to zero, okay? Now, what does that mean And when we're talking about doing some circuit analysis, right? Well, if we had a circuit, um, let's say a voltage source here and some resistor in series there, and then I had an inductor here in series, just a single loop um, right there. Uh, if this was Vs, let's say, just R1, and this is our resistor L, and plus to minus the voltage across there. Well, if I said that this circuit was at steady state, DC steady state condition, um, thereby knowing that the, the current through this loop has to be continuous, it's not changing with respect to time, therefore that tells me that this voltage V is going to go to zero which we remember what we've talked about, uh, what that means exactly. That means that this inductor is more or less acting as a short circuit, okay? So another way we could just draw this is to just imagine us putting a short circuit through that inductor and then doing analysis to basically, now we could calculate the current flow through this loop by simply taking this voltage and this resistance and thereby indicating um, some current flow around that loop. Uh, again, based on the fact that we're talking about the steady state condition. So the transient response, which would tell us what's going to happen um, as, as things are sort of leveling out or stabilizing, uh, that, that'll be a different topic of discussion. But here we're just simply talking about the case where we're under the steady state condition so we can treat. So I'll write, um, let's say, at the DC steady state condition, DCSS, um, the inductor uh, basically be behaves or acts as a short circuit. Okay.
So this is just a key kind of point to keep in mind when uh, you're looking at a problem and it says that you're under the steady state condition, then you would know that you can treat any of your inductors as short circuits. Okay, so now let's talk about the sort of uh, similar approach, but with capacitors. Take a quick minute to erase this board and uh, go on from there. Okay, so now in the case of the capacitor, um, we defined uh, the schematic symbol looking like this. Um, we can indicate some voltage across this, plus to minus current flowing in the same direction as indicated here. And here we talked about uh, the sort of defining relationship for the capacitor relates the current to the change in voltage with respect to time. So here I have that uh, the current I here through the capacitor is equal to C dV dt, okay? So here, again, similar to how we saw the voltage in the, in the case of an inductor, we saw that the voltage um, had some effect or was changing with respect to changes in the current. Here, with the case of a capacitor, it's the current that's going to be affected by any changes in the voltage with respect to time. So that's our dV dt term there. And then we could, again, similarly do an integration, swap some variables around to come up with the voltage with respect to the current, where this would be 1 over C, uh, the integral over whatever time period you're looking at, our current I times D tau, plus whatever the initial voltage was, which would just be V at time T0. So again, if I'm integrating here from T0 or T0 to T, that's what my voltage will look like with respect to the current specifically. Okay, so now similarly, as we talked about when we're talking about the DC steady state condition, if we're in a steady state condition, therefore there's no changes in the voltage of the current with respect to time, um, then under that case, this dV dt would also have to go to zero, and thereby this current I will also have to go to zero. So now if we look at that, uh, what that would look like in terms of um, a specific uh, simple circuit here, we have a, say we have a current source, some resistor here, and some capacitor in parallel with that as well. Okay, so if this is my current IS, let's say, my resistor and my capacitor C. Um, if I were to indicate, let's say, some current flow here, IC, okay, well if I was under a DC steady state condition, okay, that would tell me that my current this current IC would have to go to zero because I have no changes in the voltage with respect to time. And so by definition, therefore, that means that this can be treated more or less like an open circuit. We can more or less just ignore the, uh, the effect of that capacitor once we've reached the steady state condition. And so then all in that case, then if IC had to be equal to um, zero, so no current flow down that branch of the circuit, then I know that in that once I've reached steady state, that all the current from this source cur uh, current source IS would then be traveling down through my resistor R, and from that I could uh, use Ohm's law to calculate voltage and such. Okay, so again, just to kind of re repeat, at the DC uh, DC steady state, that's DCSS condition, the capacitor capacitor can be treated more or less as an open circuit. Okay. And so that's how, if we're, again, given a problem where we're told that the condition is you're at steady state already, you don't have to worry about the transient response, and you have some capacitors sitting in that circuit, then we can just treat those as an open circuit in our uh, schematic that we were looking at, and thereby do the analysis based on that fact. And, and again, now allow us to, to do the analysis with only having to work with the resistors rather than worrying about the exact impact of the capacitors themselves, okay? So that was just a quick recap, just to emphasize a real key point to understanding uh, the use of inductors and capacitors and circuits, uh, specifically under the DC steady state condition. I'll look forward to see you, seeing you on the next video.